with an excellent connection. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Nightsmith and YouTube. How are we doing today, guys? I have some nice hot cup of coffee. You see, I have the auxiliary camera here. We're going to do a small unboxing. I got some Bloodwood to a special order. I've never seen it before in real life. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, uh, hand stitching here because I really want to get my tobacco roll, uh, not tobacco roll, uh, pipe roll finished. Um, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Didn't have the can the microphone in front of me. Great. Um, so let's start that over. Good morning. Auxiliary camera, unboxing, check. Stitching, because I want to get something finished, done. Super excited about this unboxing, have some hot coffee. <sighs> so let's jump into it. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm an idiot. I just, out of my mind. How's everyone doing this morning? Speak into the mic, yes. Well, it would help if I had the mic even remotely close to me. Ah. <sighs> Like I said, there are just some mornings where I'm just out of it. So let's get this chat set up. Gonna open the doobly doo and okay. Is that all right? Yep, yeah, we good. We good there. All right, let's get this shared around and uh, we can get rolling. <sighs> So good morning, Eileen. Good morning, Joey. Hope you guys are doing well today. Joey, I hope you slept for a change. And uh, Eileen, I've seen some of the stuff you've been doing. We're going to be getting into that a little bit today. In addition to just the regular, normal, blithering, blathering, wandering, meandering thoughts that I have. Posted that. Let's share this around. Share public. And share to a page. Click. Yes. All right. So, a note about this exotic wood. Um, it is blood wood. So it's supposed to have this really nice blood blood color. A uh, super hard, super. Super durable, but also kind of knotty and has really interesting and interwoven grain. Um, I had to get this special ordered for a client. Uh, because uh, they have really expensive taste in wood. So I cannot, uh, I cannot say I've ever worked with this before, but... Eh, we'll see. But he has really expensive taste in wood, and I'm building him a Magic Card deck holder. So uh, this will be interesting. Good. Started off rough. All right. A few things in here. So let's switch over to the chat and get ready for that lovely, lovely saw sound. Okay. Eileen, good. Started off rough, but picked up when I cut my second earring set and turned out better than the first. Fantastic. Chicken butt. Okay, what's up, chicken butt? Uh, just got my second 100% quality score ever. Good job, Laura. I'm proud of you. Um, and this one was from the hardest scoring person in the QA team. Good. Good for you. That's pretty awesome. Hmm. Morning, Joe. 
How are we doing today? So, like I said, super excited to do this unboxing. We have a few people in here, so I'm going to probably do it in five, five minutes or so once I finish this lovely little cookie. Mom made a few chocolate chip cookies the other day, and I, I ended up nicking a few this morning. Uh, let's see. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, actually slept last night. The headache's, actually, the headache's gone. Um, got up early, got myself breakfast. It's a good morning. Uh, let's see. Eileen Rich will not be joining us this morning. I sent him on a mission. Oh, boy. Well, then I guess he's just got me missing out now, isn't he? Hmm. So I'm guessing before I do a, uh, a close-up on this, I should probably block out the... Uh, I should probably do the smart thing and block off the address. Right? Ah, oh, there's a Sharpie. That's nice big and too. Let's get this little guy taken care of. Oh, that smells fantastic. You like the shirt? <laughs> I believe I got this from a, uh, a nerd block. Uh, was it one year ago, two years ago? My wife bought me a subscription to nerd block for Christmas or my birthday or something. And I got some ridiculous, ridiculous shirts. And I absolutely love them. I think I've worn one almost every day this week. Uh, I think yesterday and the day before were the only exceptions. Um, they're some of my favorite shirts and I get them all the time. Or rather, I wear them all the time. How do they get chocolate on the side of my mug? <sighs> so yeah, one of my favorite shirts. I think I have like two or three Rick and Morty shirts. Which is funny because I didn't, you know, I've been wearing these shirts for like two, three years. And I didn't even start watching the show until like a month ago. <laughs> So, people are always comment me on comment on my shirts and like, oh my god, I love that you watch Rick and Morty. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous t-shirts are the best. I have one that I absolutely love. It's uh, from a distance, it looks like a, a big white skull on your chest, um, but once you get up close to it, you can see it's just a bunch of kittens in grayscale. Um, me and Mick went to uh, the Smithsonian down in uh, in uh, D.C. And uh, this big black lady, she was just sitting up there and she was giving me the stink eye. Just watching me. And I, she was uh, a cashier for something. I, I forget what it was for. I don't know if it was for you know admission or, or lunch or, or, or in a gift shop. I, I forget where, but I, we had to interact with her. She was giving, giving me, specifically, the stink eye the entire time walking up. Just, it's like, what, what'd I do? I, I didn't steal anything. I didn't knock anything over. Like, do I really just look like that much of an asshole? Which, yeah, I probably do. But then she got, I got up close to her. She looked at me really hard and looked at my shirt and looked at my face. And then she just melted and just start laughing. Oh my God, I love your shirt. I thought it was a skull. I was going to yell at you for blah, blah, blah. So, what is wrong with me? Chocolate all over. I don't have any chocolate in my face, do I? Jesus. 
Um, but yeah, it was absolutely hilarious. And then I thought she was going to be like the meanest person on earth. And she turned out to be awesome. So. <laughs> Laura, he is food shopping. The mission is to find turkey sausage at Aldi's. That is a promotional item they are testing out. Hmm, interesting. Uh, no one has it in stock. Well, Rich, uh, if you see this on the playback, good luck. Okay, this is mostly dry. I don't think you can see it. A few people in here. It's been a few minutes. I'm done with the cookie. Let's open a package. All right, let's, uh, let's see. Which one is it? Ticker. Oh, that was the wrong cutscene. Oh, well. Okay, I'm going to bring you over my shoulder and drop this doobly-doo down. You guys see that just fine. It looks like you can. Another sip of coffee. Delicious nectar of the gods. Okay. Now, I got to say, I love these little buck knives. They are absolutely fantastic. Super, super sharp. And just t small enough to fit right inside the little, uh, little pocket watch pocket up like your jeans. So, and uh, cut that. Get a little slice of here. Oh, that didn't work. So does anyone else have a favorite knife that they use for doing stuff? You're a friendly lumber supplier. Actually, their prices were really good. Oh my geez. Now I just got the sample size because this this is really all I need for the uh, for the cards. Oh my. That is just beautiful. Can you can you can you see that in grain? That is just gorgeous, guys. I mean, look at that. I'm sure this color's gonna come out once it comes out a little bit, a little bit nicer. Oh, baby, I am excited. You know, the camera's not really picking up the picking up as well as I wanted, but Marse. All right, it looks like they got a little sapwood here. That's okay. A little burning, so I think that's something I'm going to have to worry about. A little checking there. Man, this is like super dense grain structure. Very excited. A little knot. A little burning there as well. A little burn there. A little burning there. Now, I wonder if this is a really oily wood. So transverse now there. And a little sapwood right there. Oh, right there. Man, I am so excited. It's actually kind of heavy too for what it is. I mean these are only like half inch pieces. They're about what three by six? They're they're pretty pretty flush. L little cupping on some of them, a little bowing. Doesn't look like there's any twist. Which one thing I did hear about is these things might get twisted really bad. There might be a lot of built in pressure. All right, so that is the blood wood. sap wood. Okay, so you have two you have two types of wood. Um, let me get over to the chat screen again and uh, we'll talk about different wood types and stuff. All right, ah, uh, purdy. It is very purdy. Uh, I have a Gerber Talon. That is my favorite daily use knife. And then I have my showpieces. I would be very excited to see your showpieces there, Joey. Or not Joey. Joe. Um, yeah, I love knives. Uh, let's see. I really need to start getting into making knives again. 
and what is sapwood? Okay, sapwood, you have two different, two different types of wood within a tree. You have heartwood and you have sapwood. Heartwood is, uh, sapwood is where all the sap runs up and down uh, throughout the year. Uh, it is usually softer and not as dark of a color as the heartwood. Um, and only certain trees does it really matter visually like pine uh, they're, they're sapwood and hardwood heartwood but you can't really tell a difference um, like with this this wood here and sapwood is usually the outer it, well sapwood is the outer layers and, and, and hardwood is the inner layers but you can see here um, you have the grain going this way on the piece. Well, let me switch over to the other cam here. Let's just cut real quick. I'm saying heart wood, like heart. Uh, so you can see the grain is running this way. And when you look at a certain light, you can see that this is all nice and red and this is all nice and red. But this section here is nice and light. Um, so this most likely had sap running inside of it and there's probably, you know, this has got to be right on that layer between hard heartwood and sapwood. Um, but it probably had a little dip in it and this is just part of where the sapwood was. Not the worst thing in the world, but it is a, it is a difference that, you know, um, it does make a difference uh, usually just in coloration. Not so much in the practicality or use of the wood. Um, but a lot of people try to go for uh, the heartwood as much as possible. It's the more valuable. Uh, get that all the way out of the way? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Uh, it is the most valuable part of the wood. Um, just because it usually has a prettier color. It's uh, slightly harder than the sap wood. There's less of it. <sighs> Personally, I kind of like it when a, when a piece does dip through that, that heartwood and sapwood a little bit just because you get that, that interesting different coloration. And like I said, it really doesn't matter all that much um, once you get to um, you know strength and stuff. It does matter, but not terribly so. Anyways, super excited about that. I hope my client is going to be just as excited. Um, like I said, it's for a magic card deck. Um, he has, so we're doing one first and then he's, he wants to do like, you know, five or six more, um, and then do an overall sized, uh, holder for all of those. So, you know, it's looking at like a several thousand dollar investment with me, which I am very okay with, but we're going to piecemeal it out some. So this is for piece number one. I am super stoked about it. This wood is gorgeous. I need to finish up on, or uh, read up on how to finish uh, blood wood because exotic woods especially have uh, uh, different ways of finishing them for how they uh, for how they look and different ways to glue them up. Like uh, purple heartwood has so much, uh, and I think coco bolo and ebony are very oily on the inside so you need to use uh, certain glues and you have certain time constraints as to when you can glue them up. Um, you know, things like that, whereas, you know, ash, maple, hickory, uh, uh, pine, yeah, just slap some glue on there, grab a clamp, and you're good. So, you know, small differences, subtle differences, but they are uh, notable. But I am so excited for that. <laughs> ah, so what projects do you guys have going on today? What are, what are you guys going to be doing? Anything fun, anything exciting, thrilling? Didn't freeze up on you, did I? Looks like I froze up on you. Oh no. It's actually a pretty nice day out, so. 
Let's see, audio production today for my podcasts. Cool. And Eileen is going to the butcher at Westside Market in Cleveland to pick up some meats. Ooh, what meat? Finally got the green light from iTunes. Sweet. You know, we need to look at getting each other on each other, get, getting together and getting each, on each other's shows and stuff and doing some cool stuff. Um, I'm very curious as to what you mean by you got greenlit by uh, iTunes. Let's see. Then we have a social distancing barbecue with all the neighbors. How is that going to work? Hmm. So I'm going to be digging through my car um, because I ran out of vape juice. I have uh, that much left. I have some ordered from Yeti because everyone is beef nice uh, because everyone is closed down but uh, yeah it's not gonna be here till Monday Monday evening they said so um, not fun Ooh, you got 10 pounds of Chuck Nice. Hey, just saying, you should try that meatball recipe I gave you. And those uh, measurements are all just uh, suggestions. And when I say a dash, I'm usually a little bit more heavy handed than I'd like to admit. <laughs> But yeah, Joe, I think we should definitely do something and somehow about getting on each other's shows and doing a little cross promotion and a couple collaborations if we're able. Uh, Eileen, four pounds, beef stew, four sirloins, three ribeyes, two three pound beef roasts, 10 beef patties and two fillets and two T-bones. Damn. That's uh. It's a lot of meat. Long story short, when you have a podcast, it has an RSS feed. In order to have your show on iTunes, you need to submit the feed for approval. They have guidelines and such. So, interesting. Well, I would be very interested to see the... Um, drawn out version the the, the in-depth explanations and stuff of, of things even though i know it's not appropriate for here um i wonder if i can get myself on itunes for some of my audio stuff maybe possibly that's probably something i should look into and uh awesome by the way for getting yourself all green green lit and ready to go Let me just check up through that conversation real quick again. So like you said the other day uh, in our little little conversation, uh, we should definitely start you know reaching out to people or, or have a bit more of an in-depth conversation uh, some point soon here today. Um, because I'd like to get the, the ball rolling on our stuff. Um, as soon as we're able to, uh, uh, you know, start getting people together, I want to have, uh, plans to get people together. So I do believe I'm going to start sewing because I have one more seam that I have, uh, uh, marked out on my stitches here. And, but don't worry, I will still be able to see the chat. Uh, let's do that transition.
All right, so I already have this all marked out for myself here. It's mostly staying together. Uh, this is just that, that tobacco, tobacco pipe roll that I was talking about earlier. Because I do love my pipe. Um, started working on this oh, 8, 9 o'clock last night. Having a good time with it. At least a mostly good time. I want to. I'm trying out some new techniques and some new uh, materials, and I want to have some idea of what I'm doing together before I go on and uh, do tomorrow's show. Because I do believe it's important to know what you're doing a little bit before you start. Uh, doing it live on screen and trying to give stuff away just a little bit not all the way i'll never say i'm a master of anything except making mistakes i'm pretty damn good at that uh let's see i was wondering if that was a tobacco pipe homemade uh this one in particular is not but i do homemade i do make them myself um, if you go on the Facebook group, you do you can find a bunch of pipes I have made. Um, I need to get back into making them because uh, they're fun. But I can talk about that tomorrow on the on tomorrow mornings. I could, and I do want to do a manliness Monday on um, you know, smoking a pipe, how to smoke a pipe, some uh, thoughts and discussions behind it. I have it downstairs. Anyways, let me put this down. I'll grab the pipe. So this is my my current favorite pipe. Um, it's a it's a standard church warden. You know, nothing exciting. Slight curve, um, acrylic stem. Uh, has a nice cake built up on the inside. Just a a, a straight burl. Um, nothing fancy about it there. Made in Italy. But the whole thing is, and this is why I don't have any of my own pipes that I make uh, on hand. I'm an idiot. I end up throwing them in a, in a pocket and I sit on them and I snap the stems. Um, acrylic stems are a little bit more uh, durable, uh, but I actually have my stem turned um, and I do this really intricate turning and stuff on them, um, which makes them beautiful, but also makes them fragile and dumbass me throwing them in the pocket and it's a recipe for disaster, but the point of this is I can slip my pipe in there all nice as you please. I have a nice little pouch for my uh, you know, pipe cleaners. I have a little slot for uh, tobacco tin, uh, pipe tool. This is for this lighter here. It'll fit right in this slot. I'm going to do one up here for matches. Um, and with the rest of this, I want to do some sort of a, you know, some sort of a elongated pouch here. Um, I'll probably actually trim this, you know, right about there-ish. And leave this side, you know, just a extended flap. So I could flop this over. And then it'll flop on there, it'll flop on there, and then I'll have a closure of some sort. Then I can open everything up. I have, you know, tobacco pouches, 
I have a tin, I have you know my tool, my lighter, my matches, cleaners, and something sized for a couple different pipes. So it's right there. Oop. So it's always protected. It will be protected that way, that way, and that way. Those are my ideas at least. Um, so far I've just been carrying everything around in a pouch and it was just <sighs> embarrassing. Uh, you know, I, I, I try to have a bit of class to myself. Um, so when I have just something just floating around in a in just some junky pouch, it, it feels very embarrassing to me. Thank you. Um, this is my own design. It's way different from everything that I've seen thus far on the market. So I'm going to test it out for myself. And if, the, if I find that this is a good design, I'll pattern it. And then I will start uh, putting that into production. Because I have the plan and the goal of getting together a few different things. I want to get together a DOP bag for men. Um, you know, with a straight razor, honing stones, uh, my beard balm, and some other stuff. Uh, probably some, uh, uh, you know, shaving soap altogether. And then I want to get a, a, you know, a nice wallet. Of course, all of it's got to be made by me or manufactured under my license. Such as the beard balm gets manufactured by Laura on here, owner of Kitty Girl Boutique. Why are you not coming out? There we go. Um, making something, what I miss? You didn't miss a whole lot, to be honest. I'm just sewing on a pouch into my pipe roll. No, I heard my name by Nice Smith Beard Balm, made of high quality ingredients and expertly crafted. Yes. What the devil is going on here? You should be going to the next slot. There we go. Let me see these little snafus. Um, yep, that was the shout out. Yes, it was. These little snafus I'm having here are uh, not happy making, but I'm glad I'm having them now as opposed to when I'm building something to give away to y'all. Like I said, tomorrow I'm building an SD card holder. Uh, I anticipate building it so that it'll have, what is it, 12 slots for SD cards as well as a... Uh, There's a little bonus doobly-doo for you. A little bonus slot pouch type thing to hold some other small accessories. Like an SD card pin or a micro SD card pin or whatever uh, for your cell phone. Um, or, you know, just some random small little things that are accessories to it. Some extra micro SD pieces, whatever. It's always nice once I get into a rhythm with this. It's it's fun. But I'm not experienced enough yet to just 
fall right into that rhythm. It takes me a little bit. On these little short pieces, can't exactly get into that rhythm. And I'm not sure if it's just perception or or what. But I feel like these long, nice long pouches I did with that nice long stitch took almost the same amount of time as a short one. Now, there's a good chance that was just perception and not reality. But still. I figured this way I could kill, uh, do this on here, kill two birds with one stone, get some more practice. It's always better to practice on something that I just have, as opposed to uh, something that I'm trying to give away, new stuff, and it's entertaining for at least a couple of you. Have you ever considered doing a box type service like Bespoke or uh, Sasquatch? Let me make sure there's no more to those questions. Um, some, you know, something similar. I'm, I'm assuming I could do 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 with those guys, um, or do do like those guys. Uh, I don't think I'd ever do something quite the same because I want something truly bespoke um, whereas they just ha kind of have uh, they're like a marketing line so I, I want to actually do higher quality um, lower batches and I want to have a full hand in everything I'm doing. Like even though I'm having Kitty Girl Boutique uh, manufacture my stuff, my, my beard balm, I, uh, I went through, I made it myself for a long time. I did a lot of research, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours late nights reading different articles and different magazines um you know opinion pieces everything researching the best ingredients um medical articles everything trying to find the best ingredients for my beard balm and then what what, what are the best processes for the beard balm and there is another hundred hours 200 hours of research all right get to the finish So that's, that's what I want to put into all of my products. Um, I want to put in the legwork to really make sure I know everything that goes into everything. The ins and outs. Um, and then if I'm going to have anything farmed out to somebody, like uh, like I farmed out Kitty Girl to be, uh, the, the Beard Bone to Kitty Girl Boutique, I want to make sure that they're trained exactly how I want them to be. So they make things exactly how I want them to be made. Um, so I, I'm very possessive over my uh, my ideas and my brand, um, which is good and bad. It's good because you know I I, I hold such I hold really strict quality control standards. However. Um, I might be a little too uh, 
Ooh. I might be a little too strict and, and a little micromanaging at times. So it's very hard for me to hand things off. It's very hard for me to uh, do anything like that. Let's get back into the chat so we can talk. Because this is all nice and done. Oh, let's see if it fits. It better fit. I just want a loose fit, but just a slot for it. Because this will be changing in size as there's more or less twine. So nice loose fit. All right. I did nice. I, I thought that was a nice cool little detail too. I did a little side cut there. Um, had a little side cut here on this. So, well, while it's here, I might as well put my pipe in here as well, shall I? Yes. I'm gonna sign shall. All right, thank you. Thanks, Eileen. So let's go back to the face chat. And slide down. I get that every podcast comes under D Productions and has my hand in it somewhere. That's an interesting business model, a boutique, a more personalized version of a man box type service. Yes. Um, and as I'm doing these things, I want them to be things that can last you for a long, long time. Um, like this pipe roll, I want that to last you as long as you want to have it. Um, I don't want to skimp on materials. I don't want to skimp on thought or procedure. I want to make things as fantastic and as well-made as possible. Um, same thing with my beard balm. You know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of research, trial and error, uh, you know, R&D. Um, a lot, lot of personal expense before I even got the first one out the door. Um, and at this point, I'm only making like less than a buck per ounce, even though I'm, you know, even though it has to charge eight dollars an ounce. I try and keep it as cheap as possible, as affordable as possible, and I want the best possible product going out there into the world um, because it does have my name on it, and I really do want to make this world better. So I'm not going to put out junk, even if I barely make money on it. Um, wallets, I want to do wallets as well. I think I said that, um, you know, dot bag. So I'd like to have, uh, almost like a whole manliness starter kit basically. Um, so like the dot bag would have a nice razor, um, it had like, you know, nail trimmers and stuff, hair trimmers. Um, you know, of course an all leather bag, it'll be emblazoned with Knightsmith. Um, st you know, honing stones, honing oil, um, beard balm, everything. Uh, as far as doing some sort of a production type delivery service, uh, so far the only thing I think I could even do that with would be soap and uh, shaving soap and beard balm. Um, once I get the formulas worked out for those, I've been researching those. I probably have about 200 hours into body soap and shaving soap. Um, I want to sink another two or 300 hours into it before I start doing the R&D. Um, and then once I get things to where I want them, the right smell, the right consistency, the right uh, oils and chemicals and stuff, because everything's chemicals one way or another. I just try and go for as natural as possible. Um, once I get all that together and formulated I'll be turning that over to Laura um, and then once it's there I'm going to start shipping out to market um, because I, I, I want to have a whole line and I'd like to do things like well yeah you know you get the one that's you know this will last you a month okay cheap it's good to start Everyone wants a trial trial of some sort. Eight bucks, that's nothing. You get a whole month out of it. Great. Um, 
After that, I want to start offering, uh, you know, like four ounce uh, containers as well of the beard balm, which should last you uh, about four or five months, depending on how often you shave and shower and how often, you know, how much you use. Because uh, someone with like a little goatee is not, is not going to use nearly as much as someone with a full beard. Um, but we can do things on like a rotational basis. And then I want to actually turn a nice, eventually, I want to start doing this program where I turn a nice big bowl, um, you know, so, some sort of either exotic wood or, or some nice hardwood or something. Um turn it myself and have it so it's a lidded box um, you know with all the proper engravings and stampings and stuff and I'm gonna have to try this you know one or two of these out to see how long they last um, but the idea would be it is much more expensive but it's a year and a half supply of beard balm or shaving soap or whatever um, but you get a discount if you bring that container back so those are my thoughts let's see amen that's where I'm being a perfectionist to a certain degree on my own worst enemy yes you are every creator is their own worst enemy um, I never think I've done it right I never think I've done it right, or I think it can always be better, crafts or food. Yes, it can be. Um, you can always do it better. And no matter what you do, it'll never be perfect. However, and I think I've touched on this in a few different, um, a few different project videos, a few different philosophy videos, a few different manliness videos. I think it's even coming up in one of the Wish I Knew videos. Um, you can chase perfection. But at the end of the day, no one's going to notice the things that you didn't uh, get perfect. Like on this, on this here. Eileen, do you like this? Think this is a good idea? You know, stitching looks good. Does it look clean? Nice, nice, even stitching. Horrible. I hate it. I think it's garbage. But I can either sit back and rip the stitches out and redo it and rip them out and redo it and rip them out and redo it, or I could take a step back say it's good enough this is a prototype it's just to get the idea out there and then I can go on from there so you can chase perfection but at a certain point you're gonna get diminishing returns and most likely no one will ever see your mistakes you saw my house you saw that the furniture I built did it look like junk to you to me it looks like crap I see every flaw, I see every mistake, every you know, slightly off-center nail, every slight run in the in the finish in the stain. You know, things aren't matched up perfectly, things aren't exactly 90 degrees, they're 89 or they're 92 or bleh, whatever. To most people, it looks perfect. So you just have to keep that eye. Uh, or that thought in the back of your mind. Okay, Joe Dye. It's ridiculous how many beer products are all gimmick with garbage ingredients. Don't even get me started on the big name brand garbage. Yeah, most of it, um, most of it's crap. I'm not going to say my beard balm is the one true beard balm out there for you. That's a lie. I also believe that you shouldn't only buy my beard balm. You should switch it up between different brands constantly. Um, I actually buy uh, this one that uh, 
I bought this one that Cruel, Mr. Cruel, he comes in here every now and then to chat. Oh, if you're in here, hi. Um, he makes one. Uh, I forget what scent I got off him. But I need to get another one. It was fantastic. Um, really great product. I think I, actually, I even did a review on here at, at one point or another. And I hope that I hope it helped his sales out at some point. But um, the point is, y you want to try different things. You don't want to stagnate because even though I think mine is great, um, it still doesn't have everything, and you can't fit everything into one product. So it's better to change things, try things out, and then you also get a better idea of what your body uh, wants and needs and what works best for you. And just changing smell all the time is good for you. Otherwise, you get nose blind to yourself. Ah, let's see. Yes, true words. Every content creator is their own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Yes, we are. Um, it, it's a whole self-sabotaging thing. And like, if, if you're able to see my analytics like I am, uh, that whole time I took off um, between our last apartment and our current apartment, it is atrocious uh, what that did to me, what that did to my numbers. Um, I could probably be monetized by now. However, you know, you get caught up in your own head, your own whatever. And it just, it, it, it's murder for you. But what are you going to do about it? You just have to keep, you know, pumping through and, and trying to do your best and uh, see what happens. I don't know if that was depressing or motivational. <laughs> um, but yeah. But, I mean, look at how things are going now. I have more subscribers than ever. I have more Patreons, uh, more patrons over at Patreon. You know, that always weirds me out um, saying that because, you know, the, the patrons are patrons, but they're on Patreon. So yeah. um, I have more people than ever on there. I'm making more money off Patreon than ever. I have more viewers. I have more subscribers. I have more watch time. I have more views. So... And I, you know, I took a lot of that time off learning and studying things, even though I wasn't in the right headspace to make the content. Um, I wasn't idle either. So would I have been better served just pumping out content or better served taking the time off and learning like I did? Um, I don't know and I'll never know. You know, the only thing that is uh, motivational, <laughs> good, because <laughs> that was kind of a rant. Um, see, the thing is, the whole process sucks. I hate sitting here and talking to the void. I hate spending hours and hours and hours editing. Yeah, sometimes it's fun because you get to replay things and like uh, the interviews, I have funny questions that I ask or we get on side con, you know, comments and stuff and it's hilarious um, seeing it from the other side. But for me, the, the, the whole pleasure of it comes in, not with getting money or or getting views. I mean, getting views is cool. But for me, it's when someone reaches out to me, they comment on the video, or they, they, they uh, you know, private message me. I say, wow, that was really cool. Wow, that really helped me. Thank you so much for that tutorial. Wow, I never thought about things like that. You really, you really uh, got me to change my mind on this, that, and the other. Um, and so when I get things like that, that, that is really uh, what gets me rolling. Um, 
that gets my existential juices just pumping in like yeah let's do some more um but really the whole thing kind of sucks <laughs> to be honest you don't make money at it for a long time um even now with my patrons uh, i'm still operating at a deficit if you're looking at all the time i'm spending you know uh, editing and, and researching and developing things and but it's fun i love it i absolutely love this i, I love everything about it because it gets me to that the whole process gets me to that point of helping somebody else of making this world just a little bit better just one little small cut one kerf at a time um which is why i have that as my tagline that is what i want to do is make this world better just one small person at a time one small cut one kerf at a time um and so that whole process leads to that and there's nothing better on this earth than some stranger from across the globe reaching out to you and being like, dude, thank you so much. That was awesome. That really helped me. Like, <laughs> wow. And you get those, those comments at the weirdest times. You know, sometimes, you know, you're, you're drunk and it's 3 a.m. on some random day. And you get a blip on your phone, you open it up, all bleary eyed. You might have been really pissed off. And then you look at it. it. Makes your whole week. It's great. I think there was something removed here. Alright, for some reason it didn't pop up in the live chat, but it did pop up on the thing. But I, oh, there it is. All right, you have to love it to have longevity because like you said, the grind to make money at it or to have it be a livelihood is agonizing. It really is. Um, you have to really love what you're doing to make this worth it. And if you don't love it, you're, you're just wasting your time. And there, there's nothing else to be said about it. Um, but I really absolutely do love what I do. I believe in what I'm doing. There we go. Out of frame. Um, I do believe in what I'm doing. I do believe I can make this world better. I believe I can make this a, uh, you know, a, a real income. Um, and Eileen, like I said earlier, uh, uh, or last night to you, um, to make this into uh, a real thing for you, you have to look at different ways of uh, um, generating passive income from what you're doing already. So you want to start doing YouTube videos, um, you know, Instagram posts. I already see you're doing those. I drop some thread. Um. You want to start doing, you know, talks, uh, start a blog, um, but have, you know, go always with those things, go towards the money. Um, and that might sound scummy, but that money is going to allow you to go for the things you want. It's going to allow you to do the things you want to do. And once you have those passive income systems set up and in place, um, even if it's a cent a day, you know, that's that one thing is 365 cents a year. Um, so yes, an example is my one podcast has a coffee cup sub service to replace ad revenue. Interesting. I'd like to talk to you about that. Uh, we can either do it now or we can do it, um, you know, uh, over Facebook Messenger after this. Not scummy truth. Truth doesn't have feelings. Well, the truth doesn't have feelings. No, but I do. And um, sometimes I even feel like, you know, pitching my products or, you uh, asking people to subscribe or to go over to Patreon and sign up is feels scummy sometimes to me. 
Um, because, listen, I know even at the lowest tier, my Patreon is $12 a year. That is what? A cup and a half of coffee from from um, you know, Starbucks a year? That's nothing. Uh, so even ten dollars a year that's 120 bucks over the you know the course of a year you spend that doing something stupid every now and then but it feels scummy to me um but i also realize it is necessary not only for the survival of the channel but it it motivates me to give those people the content that they are supporting. Um, so for me, it's a little extra motivation when I have people signed up for Patreon. Um, it makes me want to give them, you know, I don't want to just idly take somebody's money. It makes me want to work harder to give them better. Um, it really does. Um, let's see, Eileen, I'm starting a new format for the social media so I can be more engaged. I want to have a layout before I do YouTube and I want to get better with the tools before I blog or vlog. Um, as far as the uh, social media stuff, I 100% agree. Um, you want to be on there and be engaged. That's why I'm doing uh, certain things that I'm, uh, I think I touched on yesterday. I'm getting rid of my ads. I want to retool my blog my uh, and, and turn that into the whole thing, the store, the you know, a feed for all my YouTube stuff and um, like a showroom, a virtual showroom. Um, uh, I want to have a layout before I do YouTube. I think we were talking about that just a wee bit last night. Very good idea. You want to have uh, everything kind of in your head and together and done um, before you start because you want to try and keep as consistent of a branding as possible um, because the more consistent you are, the better everything else works out um, and I can do a whole you know, three-day symposium on that at this point um, and you want to get better with the tools before you blog or vlog uh, yes and no um, because it might be good to show your growth from a complete novice or almost complete novice at this point because you've been doing it for a little bit a couple months since Christmas, I believe. Um, but you want to start, it, it, it almost be nice and refreshing to see you start from nothing and go to mastery as opposed to just at mastery, if that makes sense. And I'm glad that does make sense, uh, uh, Joe, just because, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of convoluted in my own head. A lot of things are kind of convoluted in my own head and I'm not able to articulate them as well as I would like. I'm a little bit more verbose and uh, wordy than I should be. Just don't get lost in the details of having a format because things change in creation. Yeah. Um, like for this whole, you know, vlog setup thing, um, I have things set a certain way, but at, 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 there comes a point where good enough is good enough. Um, and you are going to change things. You just want to have a basic theme. Um, and I'm thinking about changing things around on here as well, like uh, down here underneath. Uh, let's see. You know, YouTube, I'm on there constantly. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I don't really post much on Reddit, so I'm probably going to get rid of that doobly do. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Probably need to get rid of that guy. Google Plus, that's not, that doesn't even exist anymore. So I should probably get rid of that. I mean, it doesn't help or hurt, but it, it looks stupid. Um, maybe change this around, but it's just the thing. Uh, the most important thing is clear information and good content, entertaining content. And don't get too caught up in the details like Joe said. Things change. Things change constantly. Um, so, <laughs> ah, you can drive yourself insane if you just get too caught up in your own brain. Ah. 
All right, so, oh my goodness, it's been way over an hour. And this is why I love this community. Good. Uh, well, we love having you, Eileen. It's a pleasure. And, and we want to be helpful. We want to be encouraging because this isn't about me. Um, even though it's my face and I'm talking about this is my business and I want to do this for my family. Um, I really do believe a rising tide lifts all ships. And the only way to get everything better, like if I'm going to be doing all of this, if I want to have merch, I need someone to produce the merch. So, side note, Rich has found the turkey sausage, completed his mission. Good job, Rich. Proud of you, little man. <laughs> um, but I need someone to do merch. And I would rather have good, high-quality, reliable stuff as opposed to cheap shit from China and maximize my profits. I'd rather have the best stuff put out there. So that's why I want you, Eileen, to make the merch if you're able to. The best way that you can make the merch is if you improve yourself. So if I want to do better by you know myself and I want to have the best merch out there, I need to have the best merch producer. And I want that to be you. And the only way that I get that is if I encourage you, I help you, I support you. And uh, uh, Laura, same thing with you. Uh, th there's a reason I, I pretty much took a loss building your shop. But I wanted someone with the right equipment and the right uh, mindset and the right area and the right tools to produce my beard balm. So, I help those around me. I want to see you succeed, not just for yourself, but for myself. And that means I'm invested in you more than you know. It's not a monetary thing. It's not a, oh, good for you, yay, pom-pom type thing. It's you and me together making this better for each of us. And I believe that's the best way that, you know, creators should be around each other in their own communities, between each other. I help you, you help me, we get this shit going great. The better we do things, the better we do for each other, the better we do for ourselves. Rising tide lifts all ships. Just my own personal thoughts on that. What do you guys think? And I also want to encourage you guys to come back into the chat um, because I can sit here and I can blather for uh, I don't know 20 minutes before I run out of steam um, you know just sitting here and talking into the void or I can have a bunch of interesting people in the chat I can have it open to anyone to pop in and say hello and I can talk for <laughs> It's been 70 minutes already talking with you guys and it's fun for you it's fun for me it's great for my watch time I'm enjoying it and I think it starts everyone's day off just a wee bit better so you know, let, let me know your thoughts on that so so may, maybe you know I, I'm not off just in my own brain Eileen, I'm so very thankful for everything. Good. I'm glad. And you're welcome. Um, so tomorrow, 9 o'clock, definitely improves my morning. Great. Tomorrow, 9 o'clock, we are doing the Saturday morning edition of Coffee with Night, which means I'm going to be making a project live for you and giving it away. 
Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the, uh, like I said earlier in this podcast and you know all, all week, I'm going to be doing the, um, what you call it, the, the SD card holder. Uh, so it'll definitely be a good, um, a good thing, especially for people who, who do YouTubing or uh, photography or take a lot of video or whatever. Uh, it'll be a great thing to organize all your shit because I know I have a bunch of these things and I lose them left, right, and center, and it's embarrassing. Sometimes it's footage I really needed. So uh, I might actually end up making one tomorrow and then making another one tomorrow night just for myself. Uh, Joe D. Mm, absolutely. It's, oh, I need to go to my other chat screen because that went away. Uh, absolutely. It's a strength and numbers approach. Though I will say you can do that and still maximize your bottom line, but that's a different conversation. You're right, um, but I'd rather have uh, you know things out there che- as cheaply as I can get them out there for people. Um, but th- there's a whole statistical thing about that. Uh, you aren't off in your own brain. That's good. Kick some butt, Chris and Eileen, who give away. So excited to make it so I could so I could be SD cards and switch games. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's going to be leather, so you're able to um, push, you know, in whatever, and it will eventually conform. It's not going to be chrome tan leather. It's going to be actually a nice quality veg tan leather that I bought. Um, it was delivered yesterday. Super excited about it. Um, and I think it's going to turn out beautifully. Um, and it'll be, you know, available for both. Let's see, Jody. Yeah, I have an attic gym, and I have and have been listening to this while in the gym. It's a positive community you have here. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I really do appreciate that. And you know, it, it's all people that have the same goal. Um, you know, for for one way or another, um, we want to help. We want to make this world better. We want to improve ourselves and those around us. And uh, most of the most of the people here are friends of mine, um, in one way or another. Uh, like every now and then, I you know even the airborne surfer who lives off in California. I met the guy once, uh, actually on my honeymoon when we went to VidCon. Um, because yeah, my my wife is that dedicated that she actually we we went to VidCon for the first half of our honeymoon. For me. Um, yeah, he even comments every now and then. He wants to, to see things um, grow and get better for me, even all the way over here. Um, so it, it's really good having those types of people, you know, in and around. And, and I appreciate all of you. And I say that, I try to say that at the end of every video that I appreciate you guys. And I don't think you get it. I really do appreciate you because, I mean, you're part of Nightsmith just as much as I am. I wouldn't be here if you weren't here. So tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, we're, we're doing the giveaway. It'll, you know, doing a live giving away at the end, hold 12 SD cards plus, you know, a slot for some uh, extraneous stuff. So guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I said that. I mean it. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff. And then when you're done with that, go over to patreon.com backslash nightsmith to support me, my family, this channel, everything. Um, even a dollar a month really helps, guys. Like I said, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. And I will see you tomorrow morning giveaway. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.